Hey there, you're watching Inside the Women of Denver, and I'm your host, Crystal Covington. On today's episode, we're talking about fitness, the natural hair movement, and how you can incorporate mindfulness into your everyday life. Up first, this entrepreneur has created a fitness platform to help moms get in shape and embrace their strength, sexiness, and sassiness from the inside out. We're talking with Rachel Duran, founder of Sassy Mom Fitness. Hi, it's, it's great to be here. Thank you for yes. joining you. Um, so, Sassy Mom Fitness, I, when I created it, it was, it was because of my own journey that I went through mm -hmm. as a young girl, too, as well. Yeah. I started with an eating disorder when I was a young girl. I had anorexia. Then I went into the diet pills and then diet books and the fat shake diet. So, my journey has taken a lot. Um, so, my own journey was to create something where moms can actually do in the comfort of their home. Yeah. And be able to, I wanted to change fitness and health in a different way. Uh -huh. More than just about dieting, it's not about that. It's about creating a place where you're, you're being mindful and thoughtful of what you're eating uh -huh. and mindful and thoughtful of how you are um, viewing your own self, yes. your own body. You know, creating a place where you can just be yourself, be the best vision of yourself, and whatever that may take. I mean, it could be from, it doesn't have to involve food all the time. It can be like um, stepping in the mirror in the bathroom and giving three positive things about yourself oh, every day. Oh, that's a powerful activity. And maybe taking small steps to a smart change. Uh -huh. It doesn't like, you know, to maybe taking 15 minutes out of your day for yourself yeah. and learning how to do that. How am I going to do that when I'm, you know, when the, the world's chaotic, you know, it's you're, so you're having hard, kids, yeah. <laughs> maybe you're a working mom, maybe you're a stay-at-home mom, but mm -hmm. you're completely just, I know in my day it's it's chaotic. It's it's just like how am I gonna do this? How am I gonna fit this in? Right. So sometimes we just need that ten or fifteen minute break just for to, you, like a reboot. Yes. Because you can't be really pro you know productive in your day if you don't take the time for yourself. Yeah. And I wanted it to not just be like I didn't want Sassy Mom Fitness to just be another like fitness and diet studio and. Mm -hmm. That's not where I want it to come across. I you want it to have your unique voice in it. Yes. Yeah. It's and powerful. Yeah. So, I, I mean, I tell my story to my clients, like, this uh -huh. is my story. What's your story? Mm -hmm. Why are you here? What is it that you want me to help you with? Uh -huh. You know, and that's when we take that small steps to smart change, and that's where it's supposed to start. Yeah. It's, it's with you. It's about being mindful and thoughtful, but also embrace, you know, because it's also... Be you know mental, physical, emotional, spiritual. You have to find this food is going to feed your soul in the inside and bring mm -hmm. out the outside. Yeah. So that's something I really wanted to bring out in every single mom out there, women. It just it just to embrace themselves uh -huh. and empower themselves and inspire who they truly want to be within themselves. Yeah. So what is one of your favorite tips for that first step? You know for Someone who has, you know, they've kind of let themselves go. Um, they don't really take the time for themselves. And they focus more on their family and their responsibilities than really feeding themselves and taking care of their own bodies and health. I would say, first of all, why, what, when you take that step, you have to be committed to yourself. You have to have that readiness to change. So you have to ask yourself, are you ready to change? And what is it? what are you going to do to get there? Mm -hmm. And what are the steps, the small steps that you're going to take to get there? Mm -hmm. And if you need the support and how much support do you need to keep yourself accountable? Okay. Like when you look at yourself in the mirror, what do you see? Yeah. You have to ask yourself, what do you see and what do you want? What do you want to yeah. see? Yeah, what yeah. do you want to see? And, you know, just be positive about yourself. And, but... To create that, you have to create a space that's going to be able to, to allow you to do that. Because it's not mm -hmm. one size fits all. Yeah. It, there's no diet out there that's going to quick fix you. Because I tried right. them all. <laughs> <laughs> so it's not going to do that for you. It's going to briefly maybe help you. Mm -hmm. But you have to change what's inside first. Yeah. And how you see yourself first. Then you can, you know, then you can be able to, you know, t make the change that you want. Yeah. Or you want to see. Beautiful. So is there anything else that you'd like to, you know, leave our audience with to, you know, give them that empowerment to take that first step and really, uh, and really um, put themselves first for the first time? I would say, like, that's, I would say live in the, live in the present moment and enjoy the simple things in life because that's what we have. I mean, yeah. you have to, 
<laughs> don't enjoy life. It's 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 it, that's what it is. It's not about dieting. It's just about living life. Uh -huh. Okay. <laughs> well, thanks, Rachel, Thank for you. all that great, great information yes. and for telling your story. Thank you. It was hard. <laughs> <laughs> but it's just hard for me to tell my story because it's, it, but now it's not anymore, but it, at first it was. Yeah. But it, if that changes someone else's perspective and their, in their life, that's great because, yeah. you know, diets just don't work. Yeah. They, they do. You know, they just don't. Yeah. Well, thank you You're for welcome. telling your story with our you know, with our community. Thank you. Now that you're motivated to get sassy, it's time to connect with a powerful national movement. If you see pictures of me just a few years ago, you'll notice my hair was pinned straight and blowing in the wind. That meant straightening my hair for hours on end with products and hot tools that my hair did not appreciate. Today, there's a movement for women who are tired of faking what they weren't born with, and Phaedra High is one of the leaders making it happen. Her group, Colorado Urban Naturals, empowers and educates women to own their style and fly free with the hair they were born with. So, first of all, thank you for being one of the people that make it okay and actually empowering to, you know, kind of live for your own, live with the hair you were given. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and thanks for having me. I'm excited to share more about the movement here in Colorado and what the trends are nationally now these days. Yeah, so I remember it being a really hard transition for me, and you would think it would be easy to just live with the hair you were born with, but I didn't really know. My mom had been straightening my hair my entire life, and I didn't know how to manage curly hair. Mm -hmm. So when I first started, I just looked, I looked horrible, and I realized that, you know, people that are looking for, you know, tips and trying to figure out what they can do to start taking care of their hair naturally, they go straight to you. I meet a lot of people that have already met you. <laughs> that, is, that is so funny. I, I mean, I'm a good person for tips, but as far as styling and things like that, I'm always referring to other people that do it better yeah. than me. I can always do it good on myself, but that's what it's all about, you know, not only with your natural hair, but being able to make moves to yourself at the very basic level, too. So Yeah, you're a resource. Mm -hmm. So what do you say to people who, you know, just came to... Um, dry Colorado, they want to figure out what to do, you know, where do you first, how do you start thinking of ways to um, address their concerns? Where do you send them? I actually tell them drink as much water as you can, because again, like you mentioned, dry Colorado, mm -hmm. it's skin, hair, everything just dries out here. Yes. Should buy stock and lotion too, but that's <laughs> only, so we only do so much. So water, hydrate as much as possible, and then Good um, oils like coconut oil, and then we also use Haitian black castor or Jamaican black castor oil mm -hmm. for thicker textures to keep them hydrated along um, with the water throughout the summer too. To take care of that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Just the whole technique of routine, all of that. Yeah. So what kind of things, what kind of other things does um, Colorado Urban Naturals do to really, you know, commit to helping women and um, you know, directing people to find those resources? Well, we do um, workshops and events around the metro area uh, to include the Denver Natural Hair Care Expo, which is November 5th this year. Okay. We're excited to include a lot more educational workshops and demos that demonstrate one-on-one um, -on -one hairstyles, uh, various moisture, moisturizing techniques, um, even uh, styles and fashion shows uh, this mm -hmm. year, too, we're celebrating various textures, styles, and formats of natural hair. Yeah. So tell us a little bit about, so how do you guys connect to, the, there, I mean, there's a serious national movement for all of this. How do you connect to that and, you know, kind of stay, I don't know if there's like, you know, like a big group that's, that's kind of coordinating, or is it just that you're kind of um, just associating with, something that's become a cultural phenomenon right now, in my opinion. It's a little bit of both. Um, yeah. I got my feet wet with Malika Cooper out of Baltimore, mm -hmm. who runs the Natural Hair Care Expo um, tour that she that started in Baltimore. Mm -hmm. um, four years ago, we did the first Denver Natural Hair Care Expo, which was is one of its biggest of its kind since we've done it. And now that we're approaching four years, we're expanding and bringing more interest to Colorado because there's a lot of flocking here and it's very diverse. So we want to be open to um, educating people on how to take care of their hair in this climate. 
as well as Kim K too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So who are some of the biggest players in the national movement? Um, I would say I don't know a whole lot of names right now. Mm -hmm. Um, being that I haven't been keeping up as much as we have been kind of moving into the cannabis and hemp exposure and how to use those products in natural hair care. Okay. Um I so heard of that. yeah, it's really exciting to see how the movement is um in other places underground that people yeah. have been making um hemp based and cannabis based products for oh. years that help with skin and hair care treatment. So oh. as we're moving, we're kinda of, being that we're here naturally in Colorado, we're moving into that area as well mm -hmm. so that we are educating people on how to do home based products for mm -hmm. all types of things. So nice. So what do you think is the most important thing for um naturals, you know, I'll call it the naturals. Um, you know, what is the biggest thing that we should know about our hair and to, you know, what is the biggest thing that we can start doing right now to take ownership of, you know, who we are and stop feeling like we need to flatten it out and mm -hmm. hide what it really you know, how, how everything really grows. Right. I would say it starts from the inside out. Mm -hmm. Feeling confident in who you are naturally is always the beginning, the foundation of any type of uh, style, any type of statement, yeah. things like that. So if you start from the inside and know that it's about mind, body, and soul, then the outside will start to go along with it. That's when you um, include nutrition and diet into it. Yeah. It's more than just a product. So it's your attitude. It's you're taking care of yourself and exercising on a regular basis and just, you know, just staying positive on the positive side of things when it comes to loving who you are naturally. Yeah, yeah I agree with that. That's what it, I mean. For me, it was just, I mean, part of it was also just being patient mm -hmm. with myself that as too. I did things that, that didn't too. work. <laughs> and when people said funny things like, oh, your hair is frizzy. And I'm like, okay, That's it. I'm working at it. <laughs> I can use all types of products to try to lay it down. But it just we are all individuals when yes. it comes to that. So just being patient and mm -hmm. understanding that not everything is going to work for you. Just find what yeah. works and go along with it. Yeah, being confident mm -hmm. that this is who, you know, this is who I am and, you know, I can still straighten my hair here and there and it's still fun to mm -hmm. see that different look, but, mm -hmm. you know, I can still live in every day, you right. know, with this hair and feel like it's beautiful too. Exactly. Which it is. I love your curls. <laughs> Thank <love> you. <laughs> You're welcome. Well, thanks so much, Phaedra, for sharing and, you know, really being a confident boost. You're like a confidence booster for people who, you know, really want to learn to live in their own skin. Well, thank you. And thanks for having me. This was an uh, exciting interview to do. So thanks for having me and empowering me as a part of the community and in the Denver. Thank you. Mm -hmm. If you're a busy, ambitious person, taking time out for yourself might seem like an elusive goal. But our next guest has a plan to help you find mindful moments throughout your day. Clarissa Constantine, owner of Constant Motion Fitness, is here to discuss the value of mindfulness and tips for incorporating mindful minutes into your day. So, first, Clarissa, tell us a little bit about what a mindful minute is. Well, so the word mindfulness, I kind of feel like it gets overused a lot. Yeah. It's kind of like a really popular buzzword, yeah. right? And we're hearing a lot more of it these days, and people think, you know, mindfulness is, oh, I have to sit down, I have to meditate for a half an hour, or I have to journal for 20 minutes. And really, I want to set the baseline for folks that mindfulness fundamentally is an awareness of where you are in the present moment, even if it's only for five or ten seconds. Yeah. But the piece that I think is the most important about it is to be non-judgmental mm -hmm. about it. You know, oftentimes, like you hear a, a, a diet coach or a physical fitness coach say, oh, you've got to be aware of what you're eating. Well, that's fine. I'm aware of the Cheetos I'm putting in my face, and I shouldn't be, and like all this like emotional lashing yeah. for it. Well, the reality is, I don't know, I kind of dig Cheetos. If I want to have Cheetos, I'm going to eat them, and I'm going to enjoy them. But if I'm mindful and I'm conscious of it, then... The likelihood is I'm not going to end up eating the entire bag. Mm -hmm. I'm going to enjoy them for the taste that they bring to me for the next 10 to 15 seconds. And if I'm aware of that yeah. and I'm mindful, for example, in my eating, then I'm not going to eat as much of the stuff that I would otherwise beat myself up for. Mm -hmm. So, you know, when, you, when it comes to mindfulness, it can be 10 seconds. It can be 15 seconds. Mm -hmm. It can be something as simple as sitting in the car 
and consciously going, hey, I wonder what kind of car is next to me. Oh. And looking to the left and going, oh, look, it's a blue Ford. Yeah. Or what's to the right? Oh, it's a silver Camry. And just being aware of what's around you. Mm -hmm. It can be as simple as pausing when you're walking from your car into the grocery store and thinking, what do I hear around me? Wow. That is something I would, I never really stop. I just keep going, going, going. We all do, right? Yeah. <laughs> we all do. And we're stuck, we're stuck in our phones, we're stuck mm -hmm. in our tablets, we babysit our children with tablets, which I'm not a mom, but I'm not judging, right? Like there is a place <laughs> and a time to use a, a, a screen to yes. occupy a child. But we never stop and listen to the birds and the trees. Right. Or to listen to a baby's laughter. I mean, there's not much more on this earth that's going to bring you more joy than listening to a baby, even if it's not your own just laughing, mm -hmm. or children playing. More often than not, if you're driving down a neighborhood street and kids are out playing and a ball comes in front of you, most of us are gonna be like, rrr, 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 rotten kids, why can't you keep your ball in the yard? When in fact, why don't we just stop and look at the glee on their faces yeah. from playing ball, you know? So there's a lot, of, a lot of just pausing and going, hey, what's around me? And just carrying on and going, hey, what, you know, what can I, what can I adjust? What can I not adjust? What's in my control? What's not in my control? Mm -hmm. And kind of go on from there. So I remember I did this, um, I can't remember what it was called, but it was like a training where they taught you how to find all these different ways to almost like manipulate your mind is what I'll say. Mm -hmm. But one of the things that they taught us to do is go for a walk and count things. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. I thought they were completely psycho when they told me to do this for the first time. Mm -hmm. But when I did it, and then, so basically they send you out, they say, okay, go for a walk and count stuff. Mm -hmm. And so I'm like, okay, one tree, two bush, three pebble, pebble exactly, <laughs> you know, four car. And you can't focus on anything else mm -hmm. except for what you're looking at. And you have to focus on the counting. Absolutely. So I was completely present when I did that. Absolutely. And I came back and they're like, how did you feel? I feel rested. I feel relaxed. Mm -hmm. So there's two things to consider about that. Number one, that's a, a self-guided visualization, visualization or self-guided meditation. Mm -hmm. A lot of people say, well, I can't sit still and I like, you know, let go of thoughts, whatever. As soon as one thought is gone, here's another herd of them ready to come in. But if you give yourself a, a, a job, as it were, during that process, yeah. it's, um, it's amazing that when you focus everything in right there, you're not thinking about your to-do list or the shopping list or I got to go get this or I got to go do that or the fight with your parents or your sister or your husband or your wife or whatever. But secondly, you know, when we go to work out physically, trainers recommend rest days, mm -hmm. right? Um, there's a lot of word on streets on the street now about cleanses or like you shouldn't yeah. eat after a certain time, like give different parts of your body a break. When do we ever give our brains a break? Yes. <laughs> ever, <laughs> right? And, and we so, use them so much in our society right now. I mean, from watching TV, from, you know, going to work and we're probably always processing something because we have brain jobs now, not necessarily physical jobs. Absolutely. Yeah. And that actually ties into a lot of what I do with, with coaching clients or like with, if I'm tutoring students is bringing that mindfulness and that physical aspect into it. Mm -hmm. um, Dr. Renee Ostertag, who's a phenomenal physical therapist here in Denver, actually um, had a, a saying at one point. She said, we're a, a society of bobbleheads. Right? Like we walk around and we just identify from here up. We oh. only associate with our heads. We don't get into our bodies, yeah. right? We don't feel that. We don't exercise that energy. Uh -huh. And so there's a lot of physical movement that could come in with mindfulness, like mm -hmm. a guided walk like that. Yeah. Or when I go running, I count my steps. So it's little things like that, stopping, you know, what, what do you see around you? What do you hear around you? What do you smell around you? Yeah. And what do you feel in your body? Right. You know, an exercise like this that maybe is just stretching your, your wrists out yeah. can also be, hey, Where's the pressure in my fingers versus where's the pressure in my palms? Mm -hmm. Are my shoulders forward or are my shoulders back? And just checking in with our bodies. That's mindfulness. That's just being aware of where we are in our space right here, right now. Yeah. Again, without the judgment, because we don't need the judgment. And as women, we're really good at judging ourselves, oh, yeah. especially. Yeah. So let it go and just be like, hey, what do I see? What do I hear mm -hmm. in the right now? And it can be 30 seconds and you'd be amazed at what that can do to minimize rogue rage.
if you're tempted to yell back at your husband when he says or does something, because maybe your husband, no, I'm not, my husband's perfect, but, <laughs> right? But like just in any of those moments when you're tempted to engage with somebody, uh-huh. having the presence to be able to step back right. can help prevent a catastrophe. Yeah. But one of the biggest things that we have to keep in mind is that we've got to practice these things when we're not engaged, mm-hmm. you know, when we're not triggered, when we don't have that stimulus. And if we're not practicing it when we're not triggered, it's not going to be available to us when we are. No differently than like, I'm not going to be able to go lift a car off a child if something happens, if I'm not in reasonable physical shape to start with. Right. You know, superpowers accepted. <laughs> but Wonderful. you've got to practice those <laughs> things. Exactly. You've got to practice the that mindfulness, mm-hmm. even if it's in 30 second or one minute clips along the way. Yeah. It doesn't have to be 15 minutes of meditation or 30 minutes. And that was something I struggled with for a long time. I was like, uh, diagnosed with, like, with uh, anxiety about 13 years ago, 12 years ago, 13 years ago. Mm-hmm. And the first thing the practitioner said was, you got to go take yoga classes. And I was like, I don't have time in my schedule for yoga. Like, I don't have time to put more stuff in, in my schedule. Yeah. So I had to kind of go on a search of like, all right, I got to figure out how to manage this. Some of it's dietary, a lot of it's physical, but some of it's really just about the those little practices along the way to yeah. lower that that level of angst. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, beautiful. Thanks so much for those tips. Do you yeah. have anything else you want to share before we go? You know, the only, the only other thing I'd like to share with Denver is um, I'm one of seven chakra dance facilitators, which is a practice that I've discovered. I became a facilitator last year, and it's a really cool moving meditation. Uh-huh. And it's just chakradance.com. And it uses music and meta and um, guided visualization in a moving practice uh-huh. um, to have some pretty cool insights into yourself. Sounds like fun. It is. Love it. <laughs> well, thanks for sharing. Thank you. All right. 